Game of Thrones Series 1 Episode 9 title B Door and this one I this one I felt a little bit disappointed personally. You know, because you're setting up for the last couple of episodes we've been setting up this big war against, you know, the Starks and Atlantis and it just felt flat. Mainly because you don't really see the war, you just see the beginning and the end because you're following this one cat that gets knocked out and then it cuts the black and then you see that character opening his eyes and then you see dead bodies on the floor and and someone says yeah we won and it's like when I was watching that I was like obviously they didn't have the budget to have the big brave heart battle sequence and they was like, oh, well, we'll just say it happened and we'll say who won. And it just felt a little bit like that was something you were saying up yeah, and it didn't deliver. And also the whole thing of the first half of the episode was like, you know, a deterioration of the last episode, which was we need to get our men. We need to get men from different sections to get into this war. The, the heart of the episode is the, uh, is delirious. Trying to say Car Drago because Car Drago falls off his horse, thinks she starts to think it's just him being tired, let him rest for a couple of days, but turned out he is affected by a womb and and he is going to die and she's trying everything in her power to make that not happen. And Brian's was saying how she in the first episode didn't want to marry Car Drago. Now she's wanting to save his life. So that that was, that was interesting out through that sequence. The big uh, gut punching moment was the death of Edward Stark because basically Edward you know is assessing for his crimes. He's like I'm a traitor, I'm uh, Je Jeffrey is the true, true heir to the crown and I was wrong, so, 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 so. and Jeffrey at the beginning, you know, in the last episode, he's like, he needs to accept that I am the king, the rightful king and the rightful heir and everything will be fine. And now Jeffrey's like, cut, his, cut that guy's head off. My mother and my wife are illusions of women. You know, they're, what they're adjusting are, are, are little child things, uh, little, you know, soft, the soft women. You know, chuck that guy's out, give, make him a message that if you become a traitor, you will be sent to the death. And when that happened, I was like, this is, tells a lot of reasons what's going to happen in the next couple or basically next season. It kind of shows Joffrey what type of king is going to be. He's, he's going to be a, be a backstabber. He is going to be the type of king that if you look at look him in the eye the wrong way you might be dead. So it makes him a more hateful and un undickable king. And the death of of Edward was witnessed by both of his daughters, one's marrying Joffrey and one is just witnessing in the crowd and also tells a lot of things. It tells what state that both both daughters will be. I, you know, I think the youngest is going to have a revenge quest on Joffrey while I don't think, I don't think the oldest is going to marry Joffrey. I have a feeling it's not going to happen. I got one more episode of series one, episode 10, and then on Monday I will be starting to do episode one of series two.